Okay. 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 What happened to the uh, shaft patch? I can't find it. I don't know where to put it. If you see someone walking around with a shaft pad, I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> they ain't hit shaft pads. The, uh, the half that doesn't belong to me is <laughs> The hole that belongs to me is mine. <laughs> it depends who's holding it. Oh. We have a, a story over here with Dr. Stein's shaft pad. Two people holding on to a shaft pad. This one says it's mine. Is that it? You had it by you this morning? It was. I don't know it's it's really mine. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We're going to start on Daf Vav Amadala. There's two dots here. Boy, Reb Zayda. Reb Zayda has a question. Yeah? Everyone see that? Boy, Reb Zayda, it's a new piece in the Quran. It starts with a new... Uh, What's that thing called? Squiggle, squiggle, sides of the squiggle. Okay, talk about, talk about, you know, we're talking about two people holding on to a talus, right? So let's say the reason why we divide the talus and they have to make an oath is because they're both holding on equally. But let's say while they're in front of us, one of them just yanks it out of the other guy's hand and now he's holding it. So Maho, what's the din? The whole reason why we said that they split it was because they're both holding it. Well, now look at this, only one's holding it. So the Gemara says, hey, what's exactly the case? Either Shasik, are we talking about that the guy that just lost his grip on it is now quiet? Well, I do, I do like. So he admitted that it's the other guys. He let it go and it's okay, the other guy got it. I'm Aleichem. Read the Katsava, and if he's screaming, he says, What are you doing? Give that back to me. So my Havalela Mevat. So what do you want him to do? What's the, he's doing everything that he's supposed to do. We saw that he was holding it before. The fact that he pulled it out now should not change the halach. The Gemara says, like, tricha, it's necessary. In other, in other words, we couldn't figure out, like, why is this, why is this even a question? So it's tricha, it's necessary to ask this question. The question is necessary because there's a possibility the case was like this. First, he was quiet after he pulled it out. Then afterwards, a little while later, he sees he's losing the case. He starts to scream. He says, what, what, what's going on? So my, what's the halacha? Do we say that the fact that he was quiet originally means that he admitted? Or maybe we should say, Maybe the fact that he's screaming at the end is proving to us that the reason why he was quiet before was because he didn't think he had to scream. The rabbis were watching. They saw the whole story, what I have to scream. They saw what exactly what happened. So why should I scream? Or maybe the first way was maybe the fact that he was quiet meant that he admitted. And now that he's screaming, it's like, yeah, afterwards, everyone always, uh, they start screaming later. But that doesn't mean that they, uh, you know, later on, he needed the money, he starts screaming. Okay, Omar Abnachman Tashma. Nachman says he thinks he can bring an answer to this from the following. Yeah, it's interesting. The question was given by Reb Zera. Reb Nachman, I think, is a little older than Reb Zera. Maybe it's Reb Nachman by Yitzchak. That could fit. Toshima, come and listen. <laughs> when do we say that you divide it equally? That's when both are holding on to it. But if only one person is holding the talus, then the one that's trying to extract it from the other one, he has to bring the proof. Okay, that's easy, right? One person's holding it. Umar says, hey, Chidami, what's the case? If it's the way we just read it, that that's such an easy case. Chita, you have to tell me the halacha. There's one guy holding us, holding something. The halacha is that it says... You don't need to tell me that halacha. Of course it says. Rather, the case must be a little bit more complex. Talking about that the first day when they walked in, there were two people holding it. And now one pulled it out and now one person is holding it. And the Mishnah is telling me that when one person is holding it, it's going to be his. Even though originally when we saw them, they were both holding it. Oh, now you're telling me a Kiddush. It says, Loi. 
That doesn't have to be the Chiddush. It could be different. It could be Hachma Yaskinan, then also the Kaman Kitfis Leitavayim. You're right. Came into, inside to the best, and they were both holding it. Vamrin and Lo, and the best in Paskin, Zilu Plegu. Go and divide it. Plegu means uh, division. Pluga. I think the um, the uh, that city is Fluja. There's a city Fluja. I think there's a river that runs through it, like the splits it. It's called Fluja from the. Uh... Anyway, Zilu Plugu. Fluju. Uh, go and divide it. The Nafku, they went out, and then they returned. With one of them holding on to it. That one says, You won't believe what happened. I went outside. We were going to divide it. He said, You know what? It's, uh, I admit it's taki yours. And he left, Let me keep it. Another one says, No, you know why he's holding it? He asked me if he could rent it. He's going to pay me rental fees. My, he's, he, it's a. Uh, I don't know if he's saying it's it's mine or it's uh, half of his it's mine, whatever he's saying. But he's saying I'm not. I didn't admit to anything here. So I'm reading on lay. We tell this guy that just claimed that he's renting it to him. Ad hash the chashad it to lay A minute ago, you thought that he was a thief. You were claiming that he's a thief. Hash the migras lay belisadi, and now you rented it to him without even witnesses. Something like they say in Yiddish, epis stimpnisht. <laughs> Something doesn't match up. So. <laughs> It doesn't uh, okay. So, so what would that be? That would be that the one that's holding it must be that the other guy admitted to it, not that they rented it. Okay, if you want, we could say it's a little different. Kidiktani, as it says, that one person was holding it. They walked in front of us, and one of them is holding it. Uh, one of them. Another one is holding on just to the edge, very loop, very weakly. Masuk basruchi is like a very thin attachment, like a sircha on the lung. It's like a little uh, like a thin membrane, a little thin. Uh... So, now, even according to sumchas, it says, oh, any little child that we have with money, you just split it in half and very easy to see, you know, no oaths, nothing, just just split it in half. So maybe we'd say, but some of us over here would agree, we're not going to divide it, even though he's holding on a little bit, which is a little bit of a doubt, but it's not, it's, we're going to consider that nothing. And we're going to say that it all belongs to the guy that really has his hands in it. Now, Tim, okay. That's the that's what where we're holding now. We don't have basically we don't have any proof to this question. But the Gemara says, "Imtim to Laimar, if you're able to say that means we had a question over here that if one person yanks it out of the other person's hand, do we say now that the Allah has now changed because the other person was quiet, and we say that that means that he admitted, or do we say that the fact that he was quiet was because the rabbis were watching?" And he's screaming, he screams later. Uh, I'm sorry. The first, first possibility. If we say that when he grabs it, we say, hey, what are you doing? Give it back to him. We take it right out of his hands. We put it right back into both of their hands. So then, if one of them, instead of grabbing it, he grabs it verbally. He's Makdashe. So if he would have grabbed it, we would have taken it out of his hands and put it back to make it equal. Now when he's Makdashe, it's not stronger than grabbing it. Who, who are you to be Makdashe? Just like who are you to grab it? We will put it back into its, uh, into the, to make it a fair game now. So then it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be uh, consecrated because we won't even let you grab it. But if you would say that, no, when you grab it, now you're considered the rightful owner. So then what about if he's mocked the shit, but he didn't grab it? Should we say that that's, a, also, that's just like he grabbed it because he yanked it out? What's going to be if he's mocked the shit and consecrates it and he didn't grab it? Since the master taught, that when it comes to um, uh, civil uh, disputes, so or any sort of um, um, 
exchange of something, you have to actually make a Kenyan and you have to lift it up, you have to do all these Kenyanim. That doesn't apply to Hektish. The way it works by Hektish is you just verbally say something and it becomes Hektish. So a word to Hektish, Amirasi Ligavaya, saying something to Hashem is like an actual handing over in the physical world. So, okay. So if we say that when you yank it out of the hands, that's, we're going to let you keep it. So if you say it, to, that it's hectic, that's just like yanking it because we have in this equation that um, saying something to Hashem is similar to, to uh, something physical when it's between people. So come on, Tafsadami. Or maybe we would say, like Dr. Stein says, Ashtami Ali Takva, but you don't have it in your hands. It's not in your hands. You can just say things about things that are in other people's hands, other people's hands. Uksiv, have a pasuk. Vishki Akdish is basic Kaidish. The man consecrates his house, makes it holy, goyim, etc. And we learn like this, ma beisai. Ma, in, in, Hebrew, in Aramaic, is just as. Ma beisai, just as his house. Bishusai has to be under his jurisdiction, under his, uh, uh, his possession. Afkal bishusai. Also, if he's going to be marked, there's something that has to be under his possession. Afuke hai, this excludes this. The loy bishusai, which is not under his possession. So basically, we now have the question, that we had one question. First question was, if one person yanks it out of his hand and he's quiet and then he screams later, do we say that it's really his, the other guy admitted? And then follow-up question is, if the person was mocked this shit without pulling it out of his hand, do we say, it's like, this is like a flow chart. If we would say that we don't, that we take it back, then we don't have a question. This is, there is no follow-up question. But then let's go to the other side. We say that we allow him to keep it when he pulls it out. And what about if he didn't really pull it out? Follow up question. Let's see, it was just mock fishing. You know, I think of flow charts. I think about the guy that ended up in the parking lot, you know, by the, uh, oh, by the, uh, by the wedding or something. It says, um, it says, uh, relatives go this way, uh, guests go that go through that door. Yeah, he also went through that door. They said, if you have a present, go through this door. If you don't have a present, go. Through that way so he, he didn't have a presence so he went to the anyways in the parking lot that's my flow chart you know okay so okay tashima we have to figure out the answer to this the huma sutta it was it's not a masseuse this is a bathhouse close close but it, it's a, this is a bathhouse there was a bathhouse the viminsula betray Two people were arguing, actually, probably in the bathhouse back then, they did give them massages, but uh, that has nothing to do with this. Um, two people are arguing over this bathhouse. Who owns it? They're going to want to get the, uh, the income that comes from it. One says it's mine. The other one says it's mine. So one of them gets up in his maktashit, consecrates the bathhouse. Now, if the bathhouse is consecrated, then no one can have benefit. Now, there's a question who owned it. But if he owned it, now this is my, this is Kaidish. You can't use it. So the rabbi stopped taking baths over there. This is getting really bad. And the, the baths for the rabbis. So I'm Rabbi the rabbi. So Rabbi Shia tells the rabbi, when you go to Rav Chizda in Kafri, ask him please the question. You didn't know whose it was. One of these people that was that claimed it is was just mocked this shit. Are we allowed to use this bathhouse? Well, he's on the way to Kafri, but before he gets there, he stops off in Surah. Amalei Rav Hamnuna, Rav Hamnuna was in Surah. He says, Masnisini, I have the answer for you. It's a Mishnah. <coughs> Let's say there's an animal that we don't know if the that a mother animal that just gave birth. We don't know if it gave birth before to something, but we don't know if that's considered actually a birth. <coughs> what it gave birth to now is really the second animal, or if what gave to birth before was really nothing, what it gave birth to now is really the firstborn. Whatever the case is, we have some Bechiris, a uh, possible Bechar. Now, Bechar is, um, if it's a kosher animal, then it's a carbon. If it's a donkey, then it's, you have to redeem it. If it's a firstborn, then you have to give the kayan the, the five coins. So, echad b'char adam, whether it's a, a firstborn of a person, echad b'char behema, whether it's a firstborn of an animal, kosher animal, 
uh, or any animal, whether it's kosher, whether it's not kosher, the rule is Now, what we're thinking right here, at least when we read it, is that if the Kayan is going to claim it, now, Thesis discusses how does a Kayan claim? You can always tell the Kayan, I'm giving it to another Kayan. I'm not, I'm not giving it to you. Whatever, but somehow the Kayan has a claim on this. And but so one second, we don't know if it prove it that the, what it gave birth to before was not really a real birth. And so what it's giving birth to now is the firstborn. Prove that. If you can prove that, then yeah, we'll give you the Bukhar. Uh, we'll, we'll redeem it. But since you can't prove it, so it was, you know, just, uh, you know, stand in line. I don't think so. Yeah, but the first consecrated. First consecrated, right? From its birth. The only thing is, the question is, did was there a birth beforehand that, in which makes this a second? Born? Gave birth to something, some sort of miscarriage. We don't know if it was if that's if it was big enough or whatever. If it was considered the first one. Okay. Well. Oh, that's a complicated question. I, I, I forget what the answer is. Uh, I think th I think there is no Bukhar then. I think there's no Bukhar. Right. Yeah. I, th I don't think so. I don't think there's the first one through the womb. I I, I know, but I, I I'm not sure. Anyone remember if there was a, a C section? It's a Mishnah in Bukharas. Yeah. Probably a mach like this. <laughs> you had a question, Rav Naftali? I, I, I do. So we were talking about one of the two individuals consecrating it, Makadesh, the thing. And now the Gomorrah is saying, no, the Kohen is, is grabbing it. Oh, so one second. No, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't get to the answer yet. The answer is a little bit longer. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> answer, yeah, it's good to ask a question here because... The answer is going to be very like vague and it's unclear like well, how this answer works and stuff like this. But yeah, just one second, we'll get to the end. So we said, uh, we don't say that the Kayan really has rights to it, right? However, the Tani Allah, but we learned on this, Asurim Begizivavayda, that it's prohibited to shear the wool of the animal or to work the animal because maybe it is a Bukhar. Now the Gemara is saying that when we said before that the one that wants to extract it from the other one has to bring proof. We were, when I read it, I understood that it's referring to the Kayan. The Kayan is trying to extract it, he has to bring proof. What's really happening here, what the Gemara is saying is that it doesn't matter if it's the Kayan that's extracting it, or maybe the Yisrael that's claiming, hey, how did, why did you grab that from me? Now he's trying to take it back from the Kayan. And the Kayan that took it, it's really his now. You follow? So now this, the, this new reading of, of Hamaytzi Mechavel of Araya could mean that the Kayan had grabbed it from the Yisrael. And now the Yisrael is saying, what are you doing with it? And we throw in one more point over here, which doesn't seem necessary, but it's Apparently it is. You can't just take it out of the Kayan after he's grabbed it. Because it says the one that wants to extract it has to bring proof. Are you going to bring proof that what was given birth before was really the firstborn and now this is not the firstborn? How are you going to prove that? Okay, so the, the Kayan is going to end up keeping it. But let's say the Kayan doesn't, doesn't um, grab it. Then we said... You're still not allowed to shear the wool and work the animal as if it's already a Bukhar, even though the Kayan hasn't grabbed it. And this was really a doubt. So what it appears is that the Kayan has rights to it even before he's actually taken it. Because we're already applying to it the halachas of as if it's a Bukhar. Which is by saying that you can't work it and you can't share the wool. Yeah, wait a second for that. That's the Gemara is going to say that in a moment. But right here, the Gemara assumes that the Kayan has some rights to it, which would mean that 
if you grab it or if you're makdish it uh, back to the bathhouse, the, since over here the Kayan has rights to it even before he takes it, so it, this would also apply back to the bathhouse that if he would be uh, makdish it, he, that he, it's as if he had rights to be makdish it even before he actually has possession. That's as the Gemara thinks. There's two ways of learning this, and Rashi wants to learn that the um, the, 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 the Kayan grabbed it and the person was quiet and then he screamed and in the bathhouse also the person was quiet and then he screamed. We're matching everything up exactly like that. <clears throat> but whatever the case is, Amalei Rabba, Rabba says, one second, Kedushas Bukhar Kamrit, you're bringing me a proof from a Bukhar, a firstborn. I could tell you even if the Kayan grabs it, yet we take it right out of the Kayan's hand, we put it back into the Israel's hand. We don't let the Kayan just grab it like that and keep, and keep it. And nevertheless, still you're not let to share the wool and work the animal. And that has nothing to do with the rights of the Kayan to be able to take it beforehand. It has nothing to do with the rights of one of the partners, one, not one of the partners, one of the people that claim that it's his, the consecrator. It has nothing to do with that. The fact that you can't share the wool off this, off this animal is the Kedusha Bamela shiny. There's a possibility that this may be a carbon and we have to treat it as if it's a carbon because of that possibility. It has nothing to do with the Kayan later on grabbing it. It's Kedusha Bamela. It was when it's born, it was already had sanctity. Sort of like the, after you read this, you're like, what were we thinking beforehand? Like, what was even the, the Hava meaning? Okay. Amalei Rav Hananya Laraba. But Hananya says to Rabba, now Rabba over here said that you can't prove, you can't prove from the Bukhar that the, that the uh, bathhouse uh, is consecrated. You can't prove from that. The Bukhar is different. He says, I'll prove it to you. Tani de I have a brisa that proves, that, that supports you, that there, we don't have any answer to this. So what is the, the proof? It says, If you have animals that are in doubt, uh, what exactly was the doubt? The Gemara on the next page is going to explain that um, we had a bunch of animals that had a doubt. Uh, if they, they were, they were uh, donkeys and they gave birth and we had a doubt if it was the firstborn or not the firstborn, like we were saying. So what you have to do is you have to designate a sheep to take the prohibition off the donkeys that had the doubt. So now the rule is with sheep is that if you have 10 sheep, you have to take miser. But the only thing is that you won't take miser from an, from if, the, if this animal, this sheep that you've designated to redeem the firstborn donkey belongs to the Kayan, you can't now use that sheep as miser and basically what you're doing is you're taking the Kayan's money and, and, and using it to uh, as your carbon for the miser. You know, th yeah, this is, I'll use his and I'll just send it to the base of English as a sacrifice. So the Gemara says, like, because it's a doubt, you're allowed to bring it into the pan and you're allowed to take miser from it. One second. If we would say that if the Kayan were to grab it, we would consider it a firstborn. We won't take it out of his hand. Why are we allowing it to go into the pen to be part of the, to, to actually become Meiser? It turns out that the potential that the, that the Kayan had to take it, he already has rights to it, let's say, because he already has some sort of rights to it. And now you're taking it and you're giving it to the base of Mikdash as to exempt all your other animals from Meiser. Right? This animal is going to become the miser, possibly. So it must be that the Kayan has zero rights to this. It must be that the Kayan doesn't have any rights to it. And if the Kayan were to grab it, we would take it away. That, that must be the chat. So that would support Raba that said you don't, you don't have any proof from the fact that you can't work the animal um, because that was a Bukhar. Because it could be that the Kayan really, you take it out. You, if the Kayan would, were to grab it, you would take it away from it. Amalei Abaya. Abaya says, Imi Shumha, if you want to tell me that it's the proof that the Kayan has no rights to this animal, and you're proving it from the fact that it goes into the uh, pen 
the for Maisa, you mean Shemha, like to stay in Mar. That's not a proof to Rabba. Mar is Rabba, Abban Abayas talks. Because Mar, uh, Abayas teacher was Rabba. He grew up in his house. And here, you know what the possibility is? You're going to Leslie Elitishavu. It's very possible. <clears throat> It's not that the, we know for sure that the Kayan doesn't have any rights to it. That's not what we're talking about over here. Over here we're talking about that we only had nine animals. Plus one animal that was a doubt. Now, if, if this is what's called Miman of Shach. I don't know exactly what Miman of Shach means. But the idea of, of Miman of Shach is whichever way you say it, you're always going to work out that it's going to work perfectly. Because if you say that this animal is really a, a, a Bukhar, or it's the pidgin of the Bukhar, right? So then <clears throat> it's not yours, and you don't take my sir. So then what's, what's the big deal if, you, if it's going to exempt your other animals? You never had 10. And if it is yours, and you do have 10, so then very good, then you have 10. So it's Mimanusha. So it could be that it's not that it's it's not a proof that it doesn't belong to the Kaya and the fact you're allowed to use it. It could be that it's that it's just Mimanusha. If it belongs to the Kayan, then we're fine. And if it doesn't belong to the Kayan, then we're fine also. <clears throat> If it's if you have to take mice from it because it's yours because it's not a bachar, then fine. and if it's not a barchiyuvu, then Then nine animals is not enough for mice. It's not like if you have ninety dollars, you have to take nine dollars mice. By animals, you have to actually have ten, right? It's not like. Other Amar Abaya, Abaya says afterwards, he says, Abaya retracted and he said, Love Milsi Damri. What I said was that not accurate because the Sveika love Bari Suriu. If it, there would really be a doubt here, then there wouldn't be any Miser at all. So it must be that there is actually no doubt here and it's not the Kayans at all. There can't be any doubt because if there is a doubt, even a doubt of a Mimanavsha, Whichever way you go, it's fine. And so let's just do the Meiser. Even if it's a Mimanusha, you don't do Meiser. Proves it. It's now we have a Mishnah. The way that you do uh, Meiser is you have this um, fence and you let the animals walk through one at a time to get to 10, right? Now, let's say one of the animals that passed through, let's say you did five. Five animals made it through, and you're waiting for the other five. They're making their way slowly through. So one of the five that made it through jumped back in and mixes in with the other one. Now you had five here, and you had five here. Now you have four here and six here. And one of the six was already exempted by going through. So the rule is, kulam paturim. You don't take my. You don't uh, do my anymore. Why not? The ones that went through already, I have a rule that once they pass through, they're exempt. They're already, they went through the count of Meiser, even if you didn't get to 10, they're already exempt. Now the ones that are back here in the pen, I can't pass, I can't do it because I may end up counting one twice. You're not allowed to count one, I can't, can't count one twice. So it's gonna be, in the end, we're just gonna say that it's all exempt from my school. Yeah, 10 only. Um, but, but if you don't know where they are, you don't know where this one is, it could be, it's mixed in. Yeah. Taisvis has a question here. We should say that it's Batal Baroy, and they should all be Chayav and Maiser. Ah, you'll say it's a double Shepherd minion. And the rule is, the, uh, is anything that's counted, that's anything that's sold by the dozen or sold by, by the number. Uh, if it's sold by the weight, it could be bottled, but if it's sold by the number and it's not bottled, he says that's only rabbinic. That's Tyson's question. Okay, anyway. Um, back to the Gemara. Peace, al Kadaita Sveka by Yasure. Laser Mimanavsha, if we would say that anything that's a doubt, you have to take Meiser. So let's take Meiser Mimanavsha. Why? 
if what came out was not the ones that <coughs> that uh, was counted. So then Shapermeister, then it's very good. Bilab Bar And if it, it's not the Bar Chiyuvo, so Nifta Bin right, then it was Pater anyway. Rabbi says, Rabbi says that once it's been counted, it's exempt. So Elamayas Lachamayma, so what are we gonna say? A Siri Vadi Amarachman of Laya Siri Safik, that only if it's definite do you take my sir, but not if it's a doubt. Lachanami Asiri Vadi Amarachman of Laya Siri Laya Siri Safik. So two will be here. It's, it's only going to be if it's definite will you take my sir, but not if it's a doubt, which basically would tell me that the reason why over here the sveikas nechnas on the deer is because we don't have a doubt. Because the, if the kayan were to take it, we would take it away from him. Yeah, that's what it seems. Now the Gemara asks, "Amle Ravacha mi difti le Ravina, Ravacha mi difti." Says to Ravina, "My, my What was the doubt over here that you're talking about? The doubt if it was if it uh, can go into the Maisa. Ilay masapik b'chayres. If we say that we weren't sure if it was a b'chayr, and so we're going to put it into the pan." Says, how could you do that? Again, put it into the pen. You only put into the pen things that are going to become holy when they're counted at number 10, but not something that was holy beforehand that you're not allowed to do. Rather, what it, what, what it is here is that I had a suffix pidin petah hamar. Pidin petah is that I had a suffix pidin petah hamar. Pidin petah hamar is when I have to redeem a firstborn donkey. I had a doubt if this was the first born, if this was the first born donkey. So because of that, I redeemed it with the sheep. Now the sheep becomes a doubtful pidyan petachamar, a doubtful redemption of the first born. I'm Rab Nachman, I'm Rab Baravua. Rab Nachman says the name of his father-in-law, Rab Baravua. Yisrael sheish le'asar asafik petachamar b'teich basic. The Jewish person has ten of these animals. Wild, huh? He had ten donkeys that gave birth once to some sort of. Uh, um, miscarriage that we don't know what it was. And the second one was a doubt. So the second one they gave birth to a regular animal, a regular donkey. And so it's a doubt if it's a firstborn. Because of that, I had to separate 10 sheep and all of them are doubts. So the rule is, you have to separate for those 10 sheep and then you take Meister, but you don't have to give it to the Kayan because the Kayan would need to prove that he gets it the monetary claim that it belongs to the Kayan, he would have to prove that. Okay. Well, um, the idea over here is that the Pityan Petah Hamar is not holy. It's not a sacrifice, as if it would be a firstborn animal. Firstborn animal is holy. The Pityan Petah Hamar is not holy. It just belongs to the Kayan. It's just his, his money. It's for his bank account. Right. My have Allah the Masutu. What's the end of the story with the bathhouse? Can we let the uh, the rabbis take a bath over there, or can we let anyone take a bath over there? Right. Tashima Adam Rav Baravan. Come and listen. Rav Chia Baravan said, "Have you of the Bay Rav Chizda? We had a story exactly like this. The bathhouse people were fighting by Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda Bay Ravuna, and Rav Chizda asked the question to Ravuna." Uh, I guess there was a story where we asked Rav Hizda, Rav Hizda asked the question to Rav Huna, and the pastor me held Rav Nachman, and they answered the question from something that Rav Nachman said. It says, Any money that you can't extract with the judges, then if you can't extract it in court, then if you try to consecrate it, it doesn't work. It's not yours enough to be able to consecrate. But if you would be able to extract it in court, and you had the proof, so then, then it automatically you can consecrate it, even though you didn't make it to court yet and you didn't extract it yet, just because you theoretically would be able to. We're going to say that it's already in your possession. Rabbi Yechon says, no, 
If a robber took took someone's property and the owner didn't give up hope, both of them can't be mocked it. Now, obviously, the owner could get it out of the robber's hands. He can prove that it's his, but nevertheless, he can't be mocked And the reason is, the robber can't be mocked it, can't consecrate it because it's not his. If it's Elifi, and the owner can't consecrate it because it's not in his domain. So what are you telling me that if he theoretically would be able to get it out in court, so then you can consecrate it. Me savris be masuta metalkan askinan. Are we talking about a bathhouse that's like a movable type of bath? You know the old bathtubs that they had like the legs on the bottom. You know, do you, do you think that's what we're talking about? The masuta mekarkoy askin. We're talking about something that's in the ground. Now, when when it's in the ground, the rule would be that it's never considered stolen because the ground can't be stolen because you can't move it anywhere. So it, wherever, in whatever position it's in, whatever situation, it's always actually belongs to the owner, even if the owner isn't here. So therefore... Can you, can you um, publish something that's... Uh, it, it sounds right, like partial... Uh, admitting? Uh, yeah, if you might have mixed us, then um, the rule would be that he has to pay the half and then he has to take an oath that he's exempt from the other half. So if he takes that oath, then he's actually exempt from the other half, right? Then it's not, then it's not his completely, so he can't. Well, we were, we were assuming all of those cases were, mo were money. So he gave it, he said, you owe me a hundred dollars, he gave 50. 50 is actually now there, 50 is his. Okay. So. Yeah. So the the now if you can extract it in court, then it's already considered yours and it's in your domain, and therefore you would be able to be um, mocked the ship. And so therefore this bathhouse would be a problem. If you would have a proof. Okay. Tani Rav Tachlifa Bar Marava Kamei Rav Tachlifa Bar Marava taught in front of Rav Avoh. Shnayim Adukim Betalis. Two people are holding on to a talis. Adukim is different than Eichsim, right? How do they translate Adukim? Attached. Grasped. Grasped. Clutching. Zen Eitel Admakim Shia Demagas. Zen Eitel Admakim Shia Demagas. They each take up to the place where their hand is holding. And then the rest, the middle, they're going to have to divide equally. Could be someone has a, a stronger grip, is holding further and deeper in. Another one is holding less. So then we're going to divide what's the remainder in half. Rabavo signaled with his hand upwards, he says, which meant that, and they have to take an oath. And you go went like that, he meant, and also oath, oath to heaven. <laughs> So why did our Mishnah not tell me this? Our Mishnah doesn't say that each one takes as far as his hand is holding. Our Mishnah just said you divide it in half. Here you're saying they each take where they're up to, where their hands are holding. Talking about that in our Mishnah, that they're not actually holding on to the actual garment. Both of them are holding on to the fringes, which is the side, which is the talus. You know, if you have those fancy talisim that's on the side, this. These, uh, these things with a knot, a bunch of knots on them. So that's what they're holding on to. <clears throat> Next time you put on your talus, think about, oh, yeah, but yeah, this is it. <laughs> okay. They put it there just to remind you. Um, Amar of Mashashia. Mashashia says, Shmamina. You see from this, I sudra, even the toughest base, shall 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 screen be not some real to command the pasik down me become. If someone is uh, using a cloth for a Kenyan, he's using a um uh, a, like a handkerchief, and he hands it to the one that this to the seller, and the seller grabs on to three three hand breaths of it, it's considered like he already was holding on to it, and it and it's considered an acquisition. That's considered the Kenyan. It's considered like it's separated. That's what, as we're seeing here, that whatever part is in your hand, as long as it's a, a, a significant size, three, three uh, not three trachma, over here, it's three fingers. Shalish al shalish et spais. Shalish et spais, shalish Right, three fingers. So it would be, 
we use that before that's kind of like a patch. Yeah, a patch, like a patch. That's considered, it's already a, a, a garment. Maishna um, married What's the difference between this and what Rav Chizda taught in Gitin? Dama Rav Chizda gets biyada, mashicha biyadai. Let's say he threw a get to her hands, but he had a string attached to the get, to the get, and the strings attached in this get, literally strings attached, and the husband is holding on to the string. So im yachal and not kill If you can pull it back, you know those tricks, things like push a button and the thing zooms back, like the, the kind of like those teaching. Anyway, if he could like pull it back, so then in a migresh, he's not divorced. Im lav migreshes. And if not, if it if it if it broke, <laughs> she's divorced. So um, okay, but what's going on over here? Well, we just said that if she's holding on to three three uh, hand breath, the three uh, fingers worth, it's considered like she is acquiring it. Now you're telling me that he, the string that he's holding on is can pull it back. She's not acquiring it. The Gemara says, "How some priest has been in Balak over there?" That has to do with being severed from the relationship. Acha nesina bin Nevika over here. It's just you have to give it over. It's considered given over. It doesn't have to be severed. I'm a rava. It might say talus mizuev as cholkin. If there's gold, if it's a golden talus, a golden talus, so then they divide it. What's the difference? Of course, yeah, they divide it. It's the difference of gold, silver, uh, you know, wool, silk. Like tricha the koy dava be mitzuev. Talking about that, the gold is right down the middle. Hanami pshita. Okay, it's right down the middle, so you'll divide it. Each one gets half of it. So it's like Tricha Demikhil Gabichad, saying that the gold was not exactly in the middle. The gold was moved over to one end. It was like an atara on the talus. So, Mao the I could have said, the guy that's holding on this end, he says, We're dividing it this way, and I get the, the atara, the crown. So the Gemara says, Kamashman, the Chiddush is Damalei Meichas Tavag Gosachi Ploi Gachi. That's not how we're dividing it. We're dividing it down the other way, and you're getting half. Each of you will get half of the gold. Not each of you. Not this guy gets all the gold. And this guy gets nothing. Okay, let's leave it over here.